Dr. Sage here. Welcome back to the third of three videos on the life cycle, meiosis, and genetic variation. In today's video, we're going to talk about genetic variation. So in sexually reproducing organisms, for example, humans, we have a lot of genetic variation and genetic diversity. You are not exactly the same as your parents. Okay, unless you have an identical twin, you're not genetically the same as your siblings. Where does this genetic variation come from, from one generation to the next, through sexual reproduction? The original source of genetic variation, though, is mutations. So mutations are changes in an organism's DNA, and that's the original source of genetic diversity. Mutations create different versions of genes called alleles. For example, we have an eye color gene, but there are different versions of that eye color gene. For example, there is the blue eye allele, the green eye allele, the brown eye allele. They're all the same gene, they're just different versions of that gene. And a gene is a piece of DNA, so it's a sequence of the base pairs of letters A, T, C, G. The difference between the blue eye allele and the brown eye allele is the letters, the sequence of the DNA, the ATCG, are a little bit different between the blue eye allele and the green eye allele. So why do we not all have brown eyes? Because there was a mutation to the DNA, a change in that gene that created a different version, a different allele. And that's how well we have like blue eye allele, for example. So the original source of genetic diversity is random mutations to the DNA. But from one generation to the next, random mutations do not create a large effect. Why? Because mutations are rare. They're not, they don't happen that often. For example, it's not like suddenly tomorrow we're going to have purple eyes. It'd be cool if we did, but we're not. Okay. Why? Because it's a rare chance to get a random mutation. But if you look around, there's a huge amount of genetic diversity. Okay, so that genetic diversity, where it comes from from one generation to the next, is through sexual reproduction. By randomly rearranging the alleles from the parents before they're passed on to their kids. The behavior of chromosomes during meiosis and fertilization is responsible for most of the variation that occurs in each generation. Okay, and we learned about that in the last video the second video out of three in this lecture series. There are three mechanisms that contribute to genetic variation through sexual reproduction. That's independent assortment of chromosomes, crossing over, and random fertilization. So let's go through them one by one, starting by independent assortment of chromosomes. Recall as we learned in the last video on meiosis, that during metaphase one of meiosis one, the chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell but they line up as homologous pairs, like chromosome one, the other chromosome one, chromosome two, the other chromosome two. So they line up down the middle of the cell as homologous pairs. So let's say we're looking at an organism, not a human, some organism that only has two types of chromosomes. Like we as humans, we have 23 types of chromosomes, but let's say we're looking at something that only has two types. Now, let's say the blue ones represent the chromosomes that they got from their mother, and the red ones represent the chromosomes they got from their father. Now, when they line up during metaphase one of meiosis one, they could line up like this, where the maternal chromosome one and the maternal chromosome two line up on the same side, the paternal chromosome one and the paternal chromosome two line up on the same side. Okay, if they line up like this, what's going to happen is both of these maternal chromosomes, both of the blue chromosomes, are going to go to one side of the cell. So when the gametes are made, the gametes have a blue chromosome 1 and a blue chromosome 2. Okay, and then the other gametes that are made from this are going to get a red chromosome 1 and a red chromosome 2. All right, so they could line up like this. So you get blue chromosome one and blue chromosome two or blue, red chromosome one and red chromosome two. However, they do not have to line up like that. The blue chromosomes do not have to stay together. The ones you got from your mom do not stay together when you pass them on to your kids. It's completely random how they line up. So this blue chromosome two could show up on the left over here or it could show up on the right. Okay, if it shows up on the right, it's completely random, 50-50 chance which way it shows up. And then you're gonna get gametes that have a blue chromosome one with a red chromosome two, and gametes that have a red chromosome one with a blue chromosome two. 
Okay, and that is called independent assortment. The homologous chromosomes sort independently of the other pairs of homologous chromosomes. So for this organism that only has two types of chromosomes, one individual can make four different types of gametes. They can make gametes that have blue one and blue two, gametes that have red one and red two, gametes that have blue one and red two, or gametes that have red one and blue two. Okay, that would be for an organism that only has two types of chromosomes. We as humans, we don't have two types of chromosomes. We have 23 different types of chromosomes. Each of the 23 sorts independently of the other 23. So with 23 different types of chromosomes sorted independently, what that means is one individual person can make more than 8 million different combinations of gametes due to independent sorbent. That is a huge amount of genetic variation and that's from independent assortment of the chromosomes during meiosis. The second way that we have genetic variation through sexual reproduction is through crossing over. All right, we learned about crossing over, again, in the second video in this series, a video about meiosis. But as a quick recap, remember what happens is during meiosis one, the homologous chromosomes line up side by side, so they're synapsed, and the tips of these chromatids can exchange places. So you get a piece of the red chromosome, the one you got from your dad, on the blue chromosome, a piece of the blue chromosome, the one you got from your mom, on the red chromosome, the one you got from your dad. Remember what that means is you're mixing up the versions of the alleles you got from your parents before you pass them on to your kids. So that increases genetic variation or genetic diversity. Now, crossing over is essentially random. In other words, it can happen anywhere along this chromosome arm. It doesn't have to happen right here. It could happen there, or it could happen here, or here, or here, or here, or here, 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 anywhere along that chromosome arm. It's, compl it's essentially completely random. And it doesn't have to happen only once. On average, in humans, crossing over happens two to three times for each type of chromosome. So, since it's essentially random, and it can happen multiple times for every chromosome, what that means is, one individual can make an almost infinite number of gametes due to crossing over, the reshuffling of the alleles they got from their parents before they pass them on to their kids. Okay, the third way that we get genetic variation through sexual reproduction is from random fertilization. What that means is, any sperm cell can fertilize any egg cell. Okay, well let's say you have a biological male that can make 8 million different types of sperm cells due to independent assortment. And then you have a biological female that can make 8 million different types of egg cells due to independent assortment. Well, any one of these 8 million can combine with any one of these 8 million. Okay, take those two probabilities, one out of 8 million and one out of 8 million and combine them. What that means is that couple can make 70 trillion different combinations. Okay, and that is just from independent assortment and random fertilization. That does not include crossing over. Okay, so that is obviously an enormous amount of genetic variation. In fact, 70 trillion different combinations, that's more than the number of humans that have ever lived on this planet. We as humans, we have an enormous amount of genetic variation. That happens from one generation to the next through sexual reproduction. The way it happens through sexual reproduction is through independent assortment, crossing over, and random fertilization. The original source of genetic variation is random mutations, but those are rare. In a later lecture, we'll learn how does a DNA get mutated. However, we've come to the end of this set of video lectures on the life cycle, meiosis, and genetic variation. So until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.